Peters, it's me Mandy with Big Bowling Dreams and this is going to be your video demo on how to make an embellished snap. Here it is, right here. So this is just a regular sew-on snap. That I've embellished, decorated with a six mil. I'm sorry, this is a four millimeter cone on top, and I'm gonna show you the first time. The first snap I tried is this one right here. This is with a three millimeter uh, bike cone. and that way you can decorate your snap. It's another way of hiding the snap. And it doesn't interfere with opening and closing, um, securing your bracelet. It doesn't inf interfere at all, so it's just perfect. I'm going to show you how to make this. Um, let's see, I'm moving my materials down a little bit. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, I have a lot of focus, but that's okay. Um, so I'm going to do this with larger beads. Normally I would do this with, um, this is a six millimeter snap. I believe it's a size four, um, four O. Uh, but this is a three millimeter bicone and I make this with 11s and 15s. In this case, just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to um, use eights, four millimeter bicones, and elevens. So, treating this as elevens, three millimeter bicones, and fifteens. So you can, you know, move up a size if, you know, depending on what you're working on, or you can do it with um, three millimeter bicones, elevens, and fifteens. So I'm just using larger beads so you can see a little bit better. All right. Okay, so in my instructions, I have it done one way, and it's basically the same way I'm doing in the video. It's just I'm saving the 15s for last. Normally, I would do the round and then stitch in the 15s and then add the bike home, but I'm going to do it a little bit differently. And I think this one is a little bit easier. It's interesting how you'll start something, um, you make a tutorial, and then you look back like there's an easier way to do that so in the video I'm covering the easier way so I have a little bit of thread right here maybe no more than 12 inches but it's fine for right demo I'm gonna pick up six of our 11s I'm going to leave a short tail and a tie off later, or you can go ahead and, no, no, leave a short tail and a tie off later. You don't want your tail end to, I mean, to not to get in the way as you are working. So we can save our tail end for later, but this is just demo, so I'm leaving a very short tail here, as you can see. And I'm going to stitch up through bead one. So that's bead one, and I'm going to go and stitch through all six beads, reinforcing all six beads. I'm going to reinforce again because I'm working with, again, um, eights and when you reinforce once with elevens, it usually works, but sometimes, depending on what you're working on, you have to reinforce again with eights. There's a lot of room in those holes, so I'm just going to reinforce again so that way you can hold its shape a little bit better. Okay, great. All right, from here, in the PDF, what I did 
was I went from 11 to 11 stitching in a 15. So I stitch in a 15 here, 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 all the way around. It's an easier way to do this. So I'm going to save stitching in the 15s for last. I'm going to pick up my bicom. So my thread is coming out of bead one right now. This is two, three, and four. This is bead four right here. I want to stitch down through bead four. I'm going to stitch back through the bicom. And again, stitch up through bead one. So it sits like this. That's how it looks on the back. Okay, now we're gonna get our snap. And I'm going to snap it so you see what's what. I like to call this the bottom part of the snap, but some people refer to this as the female part, which technically it is. And this is the male part, the top part that snaps into the bottom, or the male that snaps into the female. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to stitching on the top part, the male part of the snap. If you try to embellish anything here, well, if I put anything there, well, how are you gonna how are you gonna secure it? Something's stopping the hole. So we never embellish the uh, female part of the snap. Just the top part, just the male part, right here. And you see there are four holes. Kind of treat this like a four-hole bead, I guess. <laughs> there are four holes in this snap. I'm still exiting bead one right here, our little flower on top of our, it's going to go on top of our snap. I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to bring the snap so the nub is facing me, like so. So I'm going to, still exiting bead one of our little flower, little daisy there, stitch up through hole one, and I'm going to call this hole four, the hole beneath hole one in the snap right here, like so. so I'm going to pull, sorry about that, and I'm going to stitch up through bead one again. So up through hole one, down through hole four, and then up through bead one. That's how it looks so far. And I'm going to turn this back over in the front. Remember, we have beads two and three. Two and three. So we're going to stitch through beads two and three, like so. This is hole two right here and hole one. So we're going to stitch up through hole two, down through hole one, through bead two and bead three. up hole two, down hole one, 
and bead two and three like so next one is bead four so now we're going to stitch sorry we're going to stitch up through hole three down through hole two and bead four down through bead four I'll do that again up through sorry up through hole three down through hole two and then down through bead four now we're going to do beads five and six and beads five and six are right here here's five here's six I think I did I call this hole one, hole two, three, four. Okay, sorry. So this is hole one. <laughs> or maybe this was hole four and this was hole one. Okay. Up through hole four. <laughs> sorry. I've kind of turned around today. Down through hole three. Through beads five and six. Up through four, down through hole three, five and six. And this is how it looks on the front. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and stitch up through bead one again so I'm back up through bead one and bead one actually you can tell you can just look and see where bead one and bead four is bead one has this tail end coming out but I kind of got the tail end kind of turned around here a little bit but bead one always has the tail end stitching sticking out of it but you can tell this is bead one right here and then bead four is across the street. Bead one and bead four are the beads that the bicone is attached to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, an 11 and stitch between each eight. Or if you're using doing this with 11s, you would stitch in a 15. So going from eight to eight, I'm stitching an 11. Or from 11 to 11 to 11 you stitch in a 15 now um, there's something a little different that I do want to point out. Let me get a larger bead here. Okay. Between five and six, these beads right here, this is four, so this is five and six. So between beads five and six, I go with a larger bead. So if I'm working with 11s, I'll stitch in an 11 in here. If I'm working with eights, I'll stitch in an eight. And I like to use this um, bead here as the uh, a connector bead. I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. And here I'm exiting bead six and going up through bead one. And you can reinforce this if you like. If I 
it gives you a greater um, sense of security. Well, actually, not really sense. I mean, the more you stitch through and more you reinforce, it does get more secure. I think with the 11s, you can only maybe reinforce just once. I'm working with eights, so I can reinforce twice. I'm coming around again until I exit. The eight. Just add an eight right here. And this, like I said, can be used as a connector bead to your bracelet. So I'm going to bring my little tiny Hope Rondell bracelet here. And as you can see, this is supposed to be an 11, let's see, let's see. Oh, it is an 11, okay. No, let's say it's a 15, okay. This is supposed to be an 11, but right now you can see it's a 15. And I use this to string all of the pearls and uh, uh, rondelles together. And then stitch back up and I go back through was supposed to be an 11, this 11 right here. So that's why I call it the connector bead. And I make it a little bit bigger so that way you can go and through it a few times. Um, if it's an 11, you'll have plenty of room to go through it as many times as you need. Um, but if you're working with 11s, three millimeters and 15s, then it's best to make this bead an 11. Cause if you make it a 15, you can only go through it so many times. Those holes are pretty small. So that's the demo um, on how to do your embellished snap. Really simple, really easy, really fun. A fun way to hide your um, snap. And let me get my snap here. It snaps in perfectly. And it doesn't really like hurt the finger, it's not uncomfortable to snap it. You know, you can just snap it on and off as many times as you need. It's nice and secure. And there you have it. So, hope this uh, video tutorial helps you. You can use this on any other kind of bracelet that you're working on. Um, I don't know tennis bracelets or whatever you're working on. You want to, you know, implement a different kind of snap. There we go. Alrighty. So, hope this helps, and hopefully, I'll see you in my next video tutorial. All right. Happy beading. Take care. Bye bye.